This guy did give me linear cock. When that mess of my brain got her jam score, everybody talks in a fake. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even allow Jam to talk first. <laughs> Say that score is a fake result. <laughs> Before Jam would prove Toxie na fake result, people don't conclude Toxie. Bring the girl first. How can she forge her result? <laughs> it is not possible. That is not good. You're spoiling the image of the country. Why would you forge a jump score? Do you know how people will be seeing us now in Nigeria? That Nigerians are forging results. <laughs> they prosecute mess up before they even begin the session. <laughs> Form committee <laughs> to make sure say she for jump. <laughs> <laughs> when Jambu talks, say he for Jambu, mess up talks, say I'm not for the result, though. That is my result. I'm even brilliant. He <laughs> just be like saying mess up, they copy what they talk. <laughs> not template. <laughs> mess up, they talk that I say I'm brilliant. Everybody know me in my class that I'm I'm very brilliant. How could I have forged a result that I know I can get? Okay. People talk say not lie. <laughs> Jump does not lie. This girl watched that resort. <laughs> they begin the set committee. Committee where they set we go investigate the girl rich five. <laughs> Even for an Ambra State. <laughs> Governor set his own special committee to investigate. Federal set his own special committee to investigate. The private investigators, all of them food. And the whole nation support them. Talks to Check that girl where you can't be forging. <laughs> forging is a crime. You have to have capacity. <laughs> he reached for Nigeria oh, now, number on one citizen. <laughs> and they expect me to see the same reaction. <laughs> they begin to talk. <laughs> that is not the question. <laughs> the question is did he attend Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> if we go by that way now, let me say we go tell the best summer. That is not the question. The question is, did she write jump? <laughs> it is that one now. Everybody begin the talk say, hey, no, there's a way to handle this. Article is going on a fruitless effort. <laughs> fruitless mission. <laughs> <laughs> Should we now say that the system is very rude to Mesoma and kind to some people? <laughs> because there are so many Mesoma in our midst, and there are so many number one citizens in our midst in Nigeria. <laughs> but I understand what they do, these APC supporters. <laughs> you know, say you get as you get the kind of fine girl where you go the date. No matter what the girl do, you go tell her, say, baby, I trust you, I know you can't do this. <laughs> Even when the girl they tell you say, baby, I'm cheating on you. Baby, I know. I know with your full eye you cannot do it. <laughs> I know I've wronged you. <laughs> now me cause the cheating. <laughs> baby, cheat on me. I love you like that. <laughs> Instead, you will leave me. Hey, baby, cheat on me. <laughs> Mamma mia. In show. Good morning. And thank you for having me. Mr. Carlo, good morning, and thank you for joining us. Well, we're told that uh, Waziri uh, Adamawa Tuku Abubakar uh, is going to have a World Press Conference today on the, uh, you know, uh, lingering certificate saga. Uh, what should we expect? Uh, what are the issues that we should be focusing on? And what time is it so that all of us can... Uh, you know, tune in, and is it going to be televised? If you could just give us details, because I'm sure certainly uh, many people who would like to hear from him. One, I don't work for Alhajati Kabubaka. Uh, I don't know anything about PDP? his personal programs. Excuse me? 
I'm not a member of, I'm not a member of PDP. Oh. And has never been a member of PDP. I, I thought you were. You By were, your introduction. Yes. This morning, you said I'm a lawyer and I'm a lawyer. Okay, but in some other, in the production notice, you were described as a member of the PDP. Okay, you're a lawyer. Let's have your take on this entire certificate I'm saga. Not, please, let's get, it, let, let's get it straight. Let's get it straight. I am not a member of PDP. Okay, that's clear. I am, I, I, I am a member of APC. Okay. I contested the election under the platform of CPC okay. and also under the platform of APC. The records are there. Okay. I've never been a member of PDP. Okay, thank you for the clarification. But let's have your comments. You know, uh, earlier on, we had uh, someone from APC, we had someone from uh, the uh, Labour Party, although he said he was speaking in his personal capacity. As a lawyer, how do you review this entire saga that Nigerians have been uh, talking about? Let me start by making this statement that the Nigerian media houses, including Arise News, have redefined the case of Atiku Abubakar in his petition and even in his appeal. Two, the Nigerian media houses, including Arise News, have not made a bold statement concerning the oral deposition by the registrar of Chicago State University concerning the certificate Tinibu submitted to INEC, whether the school admitted issuing that certificate to Tinibu or not. These are the two issues I would want to start with. First, on the issue of redefining the case of Atiku Abubakar. The recent narrative has been that Tinubu attended Chicago State University. But no, that's not the case of Atiku Abubakar. The case of Atiku Abubakar is on whether the certificate Tinubu submitted to INEC was forged or not. That is the issue in controversy. And all until that issue is, is settled, is resolved, Nigerians will not know where to stand in this issue. And from the deposition or the other deposition by the registrar of Chicago State University, he admitted clearly without any ambiguity that the school did not issue the certificate Tiribu submitted to INEC. And that is the narrative Nigerians want to hear. And I don't know whether Arise News has a contrary view to that assertion by the registrar of Chicago State University that they did not issue that certificate to Tinibu. And if the school has come out by its oral deposition that they did not issue that certificate to Tinibu, and going by our law, which is Section 1371J, that a person is not qualified to run for the office of president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria if that person has submitted a false certificate to INEC. If that is the law, is Tinibu or was Tinibu qualified ab initio to contest for the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? And the answer is no. That is what the narrative should be. And not whether Tinibu attended Chicago State University or not. Because that is not our law. And Atiku never in, in, in his pleadings averred that uh, Tinibu did not or he did attend Chicago State University. All that was pleaded was that he was not qualified. And, the, and in his reply, stated that the certificate he submitted to INEC was forged. All right. So that is the basis of this discussion. OK. All right, so um, whilst that forms the basis of this discussion, I, I mean, we've had a robust conversation earlier on with Mr. Farutimi and also with Mr. Hassan. 
And uh, perhaps the question I should ask you is this, and, and, and it goes back to the meat of what we're discussing, because um, the discovery of this, or perhaps whatever is going to be discovered from the deposition, and what um, Atiku's team would present to the Supreme Court, yeah. the big question that has been asked a number of times is this. Would this be considered as pre-election matters in terms of eligibility to contest, or would this be seen as special circumstances? All right. Okay, well, special circumstances to admit um, in the Supreme Court. We'll take a short break now so we can reestablish connection with Mr. Kalu, and we'll be back here on the morning show to continue. Stay tuned. Banking. Even better than the raw in the next few years. Well, you're welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Before the break, we're speaking to Mr. Kalu Kalu, a lawyer, and just examining um, the deposition. We have the tr um, certified true copy, and we've seen details of what the registrar of CSU had said um, in that deposition. And Mr. Kalu, you were responding to a question. That, well, I'd asked the question. I'm not sure you heard the question. But the question was around this idea of a wild goose chase. Would the Supreme Court consider the evidence you know, provided by the deposition as extenuating or special circumstances and hence would admit it into, you know, with, with regards to the review of the ruling of the presidential election petition court? Or would it be regarded as pre-election matters? And I must also mention, because you mentioned, you said it a few times that many media stations and you tagged Arise as one of it, we have actually brought this case to the fore a number of times. We had a robust conversation just before you came on air, and we have been educating, informing, and analyzing the situation of, situation of things since the news broke. So just to clarify that with you. But please, you can respond to the question on whether this is just purely a wild goose chase, or is it evidence strong enough to be admitted in the Supreme Court? Let me take you to the case of Ozodema versus Izunaso, reported in 2011. 17 Nigeria Weekly Law Report, Part 1275, where the Appest Court held that an applicant seeking to adduce new evidence at, at the appellate court must come by way of leave to show that the new evidence or the fresh evidence he wants to adduce will be important to the, to the matter or to, or, 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 or to the issue at the appeal. So by that decision in Ozodema and, and uh, Izinaso, it is very clear that a party can adduce new evidence. And let me read from the Nigerian Weekly Law Report, online, for you. It says, Osodema, Osodema and the Zunaso, on guide to exercise of power of court to admit additional or fresh evidence on appeal. It says, it says, the application should be granted if the applicant is able to satisfy the court that it was extremely difficult or was not possible to obtain the evidence before trial and that it is in the interest of justice that the said evidence should be presented. This is the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Osodema and uh, Izunaso. Now, the condition the applicant must fulfill is that at the time at the time that, 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 that at the time the, the matter was uh, instituted, that it was extremely difficult to obtain the evidence. Going by what transpired in the US courts, one of the conditions given why the courts granted Atika Bubaka's request for the discovery was, in quotes, 
for use in foreign in foreign jurisdiction. Which means if this case, if Atuk Abu Bakr had gone for the discoveries before the filing of his petition, the US court couldn't have granted him the request for the discovery. Was one of the condition upon which the discovery was granted was because it is for use in foreign jurisdiction. Now, by this condition, which an applicant must satisfy at the Supreme Court is that at the time the petition was filed, it was extremely difficult for the petitioner to get those evidence, which is clear from the proceedings of the US court. And the court even went further to say that, and it is in the interest of justice that the said evidence should be presented. We know that our courts have said and have heard repeatedly that our courts should move from the arena of technicality to arena of doing substantial justice. If in this case, as reported in Osadema and, and uh, uh, Izunaso, that you can present such evidence once you are able to satisfy this uh, condition precedent, then our appeals court has no option than to accept it. That's one. Then let me also cite the case of Amechi and Einek, reported in 2008, Five Nigeria Weekly Report, Part 1080, on the same issue of whether at the appellate court level a party can ad adduce fresh evidence. And the court also answered this question in the affirmative that yes, you can, insofar as you can uh, uh, satisfy the court on the conditions which I had already uh, uh, explained. So in all this, what are we looking at? We are looking at substantial justice and not technicality. If you, you, you read the case of Uche Uosu versus APP, the Supreme Court heard that a party at fault will not be allowed to take benefit of his wrongdoing. What is the wrongdoing in this place? Now, it is not established that Tinubu forged his certificate he presented to ANEC. That is the wrongdoing. Now, the question is, will the law or will the Supreme Court allow Tinubu to take benefit of his wrongdoing? The answer is no. And the court also heard in the same matter, though in several matters, that the court will not be used as a vehicle to perpetrate illegality. So if our court will allow itself to be drawn into, into technicality, it means that they have directly allow illegality to be perpetrated in our legal system. It's clear. And, 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 and let me put it on record for the whole world to know that once you present a forged certificate, you are not qualified ab initio to run. You cannot get any benefit from forging your certificate. You cannot derive any benefit from any illegality whatsoever. Few months ago, one of our, one of our daughters by name, Mesoma, forged her jam resort. And today, she has been sanctioned for forging the jam resort. Today, was it that uh, Mesoma did not sit for jam? She sat for jam. But what is her offense? Her offense is the offense of forgery. And the jam, the regulatory agency, has sanctioned her for the forgery. In this case, our law is no respecter of any person. Whoever you are, as long as the law says, once you forge, you are not qualified. And Tinibu has forged. He's not qualified. As simple as that. All right. So the argument they put forward is this, that 
as long as they've able to establish and the school said in their deposition yesterday, especially when the counsel to Mr. Tinubu, Mr. Henderson, was interviewing the witness, said that he attended the school. In fact, in a prior argument where Dr. Angela Liu, uh, Angela Liu was talking to the witness, he also affirmed that, yes, there were discrepancies, but he could say they attended the school. And in fact, that blanket statement that they shared to everybody, that anybody, once they make an inquiry via email, they send to them that it was not of the school. They affirmed it that they attended the school. What would you say to all of these arguments that he attended the school and that's it? That there's no call need to be able to talk about this issue of certificate or replacement certificate again. That's the major coherent argument that a lot of people also put forward. But what do you say about that? That he attended school, he attended school and that's it. Nobody should talk about anything again. We are discussing law and not assumption. The law says if you forge a certificate, you are not qualified to run. The question is, did the school say Tinubu forged the certificate or not? And by their oral deposition, the school admitted that the certificate Tinibu submitted to INEC was not issued by the school. It was very clear. But let's put that aside and then tackle the main issue on this issue of Tinibu graduated from Chicago State University. Let me lay this background very well. In 1999, Tinibu, in his deposition, claimed he attended one primary school in Lagos. He attended government college in Ibadan. He attended Chicago, University of Chicago, and he also attended Chicago State University. Four claims in 1999, same in, 19, same in 2003. This matter was taken up by the late legal icon, Ganifa Omi, and the matter moved to Supreme Court. And it was dismissed on grounds of technicality because the INEC from CF001 submitted by Tiribu was not certified by INEC. But that's by the way. Presently, in 2022, Tinibu submitted his form, INEC form EC09 to INEC. And in that form, Tinibu didn't state the primary school he attended. Tinibu didn't state the secondary school he attended. They were all blank. And he only stated that he attended Chicago State University. Now, we accept that the document which the school released to Atikus lawyers. There is a transcript from Southwest College that has Bola A. Tinibu, indicating that that Bola A. Tinibu belongs to a female, F. There is also the Chicago State University admission application form that has this information or this assertion or this claim by Tinibu that he attended government college, Lagos, and graduated in 1970. When you put all these things in perspective, Rufai, you find out that there is no oral deposition or testimony that will contradict the content of a document. That's a threat law. And the content of that document 
the qualifying certificate, the qualifying certificate, which gave Tidibu admission into Chicago State University, has a female and also a government college, a, Lego, a government college, Lagos. And by these two information on this document, it's very clear that Tinibu also presented forged certificates to Chicago State University in terms of his qualifying certificate before he got admission to Chicago State University. Profi, the law is very clear that you can't put something on nothing and expect it to stand. That was the decision of the court in USC versus McFoy. So if the basis upon which Tribu purportedly gained admission to Chicago State University is fraudulent, it then means that whatever certificate Tribu got in law goes to no issue. That is law. And as long as those documents are there, the, the registrar of the school was not the maker of those documents. He can't even speak to those documents. And those documents speak for themselves. So if the foundation upon Tinibu's uh, 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 claim, or the, or, the, or the registrar's claim that Tinibu graduated from that school is fraudulent, it means that even the claim itself that Tinibu graduated from that school is also fraudulent. That's my position on that. That nothing, nothing, nothing can come out of that school to validate that Tribu graduated from that school. Because everything about Tribu, his academic records, have all been shrouded in, 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 in forgery. If you can hear me. That is the position. That is the position. And I stand to be corrected because I speak to the document that I have. Well, Carlo, that Nigerians have, that the entire world has. Carlo, well, technically, this matter is even already subjudice. We we'll wait for the Supreme Court, you know, uh, to come up with its own decisions. And there will be more than enough time to review the decision of the Supreme Court in this matter.